I pretty well messed myself over uh, with, with drugs. It was a very dark time. This was the 60s. Uh, we were living in Madison, Wisconsin. The campus was blowing up with, in some cases literally, but with radical politics. And I got involved in protest and through that met people that were doing drugs, selling drugs. <laughs> and it was in the air, it was in the atmosphere at that time in the 60s. And so I started out smoking a little marijuana. And um, of course, all of this is totally hidden from, my family had no clue. And I just liked it, it made, me, it made me feel good, it made me feel relaxed with people. I had always felt very self-conscious and I found I could be funny and I could be, and I could have fun with these people, we could talk and I began to develop relationships with these people. They became like my family. Well then, uh, one of my family members thought I should try some LSD and I was like, well, yeah, why not, you know? And so I started taking LSD and then there was mescaline and then there was heroin and then there was speed and then there was, and um, fortunately I was afraid of needles so I never did anything intravenously. But in the midst of that, I think the other driving force as well as the whole social thing of finding kind of a shortcut into intimacy with people was the fact of my own despair. Uh, growing up, people would say, oh, you're just like your mother. Well, they meant, when they said that, they were thinking about my mother who was a poet and a physicist, you know. So they, they thought this was a wonderful thing. They didn't realize they were also talking about the woman who was dangerous, who was hospitalized for months on end, who was unpredictable, that I loved some days and hated others. And so when they said that, I heard, what I heard was, you will be just like her. And, and, and so that brought great despair into my life. So the drugs represented an escape both from my own social awkwardness into intimate relationships with peers and also a balm or a comfort from this depression and, and desperation. And as well, I think my carelessness was really almost a suicidal kind of carelessness. I didn't really care what I did to myself. My own personal safety didn't matter. If something was dangerous, what did it matter? My life was gonna be horrible anyway. But I began to see, uh, to realize that I was getting sucked into something that was much worse than anything I had anticipated. I was losing control of my life as I lost control to these drugs and uh, couldn't stop when I wanted to. It was devastating, ultimately. Because really what I was finding in the drugs was a counterfeit. It was empty. And so I, I pretty well messed myself over uh, with, with drugs. It was a very dark time. In the midst of that, my dad asked me if I would be willing to go to a Christian meeting with them. And I shocked them by saying that I, I would. I was in really desperate straits, very depressed, really hopeless about my life. And um, so that weekend they took me to a, a meeting. It was a horrible meeting actually. <laughs> For me, <laughs> uh, a guy got up and shared about his donut business, and I was sitting there with my arms crossed, and you know, oh, this fascist pig, what am I doing here listening to this man? And uh, at the end of the meeting, a young man from Haight-Ashbury who had been addicted to drugs, and God had touched him through the gospel and set him free, he got up and he sang a song and gave his testimony, and the Lord spoke to me, and, and he gave an invitation, and I went, running to the front and fell on my knees. And that young man led me to Christ and my life was completely changed. I was set free from the drugs that I had been trying actually to get out of my life, but, but failing. Uh, the Lord set me free. I forgot about my cigarettes. My, my filthy language disappeared. It was just one of those grace-filled uh, moments. And I needed to be set free if anybody ever needed needed God, it was, it was me. So when the Lord showed up and touched me, really it f almost physically felt like I had been wearing a heavy black velvet cloak that was just cloaking me and preventing me from having any hope or any joy, any real joy. It, when I was flooded with the presence of, of God and the Holy Spirit, it was as if this cloak just fell off of me and I was free. 
I was free as I had never been free. And God began to build me up. You know, when I was a druggie, when I was a hippie, uh, I would only accept people who were doing drugs. They were cool. I, I wanted only cool people in my life. Once I came to Christ, I, He began to open my eyes and I realized I can have fellowship with anybody. We don't even need, we don't need to come from the same background. We don't need to have the same level of education. All we need in common is Christ. But when we have Christ in common, we do find that deep fellowship and that unity of purpose and heart that draws us into intimacy, really, that is unmatchable. It, it is so far exceeds anything that we can find any other way. And uh, Jesus changed my life. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful.